This is the Torg Eternity Delphi Council debriefings where the storm has a name. Once again, we are your hosts, Lehman, Jay, and Mark. And today we will be talking about various organizations and cultures within the cyber papacy. But before we get to that, we do have an email. And as a reminder, you can email us at torgdcd at gmail.com and like this email we will read your email if you have questions we'll try to answer those to the best of our abilities and if you're just commenting we will comment or add to your comments so let's go ahead and get to this email this email is about possibilities and proofing and is from rabbit ball it says greetings to all from the rabbit ball now I'm caught up with the Delphi Council debriefings and have some questions. Well, hopefully we will have some answers. Number one, all of the invading cosms have special possibilities with different abilities. Are there plans for Core Earth to have special possibilities or are the standard possibilities special to Core Earth? So I can just come out and outright say that Core Earth will have a special possibility, um, just like all the other realities will within the, the year two stuff. Um, but the possibilities will be an option. We won't force people to use that. There has been uh, various groups or whatever who just think that the normal possibilities are enough, but uh, we will have rules for all of the possibilities included as options um, that anybody can use, and they would be official options, not necessarily home, home rule options. Um, but Core Earth will be part of that. So that one was easy enough for me to answer. But now we'll get into a couple that Jay and Mark might have some thoughts about. So number two, what are your thoughts about reality-rated NPCs having their Cosm-specific possibilities instead of the standard ones? So Jay, what are your thoughts about that? That's usually what I do uh, is I give them the standard ones but then half the time in the middle of play i'll forget that that's what i did and just <laughs> use them like normal uh because sometimes it doesn't work uh for example in or if you're already a nightmare you've been corrupted so you can't choose to make a corruption check to get it back so it's basically just a normal possibility anyways right um yeah so it doesn't really matter, um, but I usually like to give them the specific ones, which can make them more dangerous in the Nile Empire. <laughs> but yeah. So, Mark, your thoughts on reality rated NPCs having their Cosm specific possibilities? I think it's a great idea. Uh, anytime you can get interesting with the, what's possible in Torg Eternity, I like the idea. So, being able to give your NPCs a, another trick up their sleeve is a fantastic idea. And like Jay said, sometimes it's not going to be as cool as other times. Um, but sometimes it's going to be really cool and, and get very dangerous. So yeah, you might want to, before you just do it, you might want to consider what you're getting ready to do because I have had occasion when I said, well, I'm, this looks cool. I'm going to throw this on there and boom. And I never look at it until it's in play. And then it's in play. And I'm like, ooh, did I make a mistake? Uh, I may have done something bad here. Uh, so in this particular instance, because the combinations can get interesting, especially if you put them in a mixed zone mm -hmm. and you decide to give them, you know, cross cosm possibilities, which you're the GM, you can do it. You want to come up with a reason why that's fine. Um, I don't know why you'd want to give, you know, cyber papple possibilities to a, to a, a Russian nightmare, but you, you might want to, you come up with a reason why you might want to do it. And it, it's going to make some interesting combinations. Yeah. It's the rule of two, which I like a lot. Um, but it also might be broken a little bit. And so just kind of bear in mind that you're going to want to put a little, a little time into making sure you didn't just kill all your party and you uh, unawares that you did it. <laughs> So yeah, I, I like the idea. Um, I, I'll echo both Jay and Mark is 
some of the possibilities actually work better for the player or just don't work like the orange possibility jay that you gave the example for and then other possibilities would actually help the npcs more than they would the storm knights such as the cyber papacy one which can be used to or can't be used for really well with magic or you can use it to i think disconnect somebody of a different faith other than the cyber papacy or you know do some shenanigans like that so that would actually benefit them more than it would for the the storm knights and then things like nile empire is just going to be good for everybody anywhere everywhere <laughs> anytime every time um so do that i wouldn't necessarily uh make it so that because your question was uh, instead of the standard ones i wouldn't see a problem other than what we've stated to to give thought about is a mix doesn't you know not just one or the other and it is something that the storm knights can do is if they go into another realm and they get a possibility they can always choose whenever they reset their possibilities uh they can always choose to choose to retain that other one even if they go into a new reality so if you did have that awash uh nightmare who ended up in nile and got that awesome nile empire possibility and brought it along with him to whatever place he encountered the storm knights and throw that you know down as long as it wasn't done kind of willy-nilly in my thoughts if there was actual thing maybe he was maybe going through one of the uh mega adventures that goes through various realities and you had something that was uh trailing you or something that they could be picking those up and and keeping them i think that would be a it, it would tie it into the story and be thematically appropriate i think so yeah might that's... be a nice beta beta tier balancing method to choose to mm -hmm. give your your threats some flavored possibilities to give them a little more juice right that they've they've been well traveled and mm -hmm. have uh, done that so yeah we it makes I me think, think we... i might change things up the next time i run town with scratch ah uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh dude that would be a good place for that <laughs> yeah yeah um so uh question number three is there any general guidance on when to give cosm specific possibilities um on this one i believe the book specific the, the source books all specifically say sorry having any trouble with that word say um that whenever cosm cards are used that they recommend that's when you give cosm possibilities out um jay do you have any thoughts on yeah. other guidance for, for I, I mean i thought we talked about this before and i don't because i remember i always thought that's when you did it mm -hmm. but i think it ended up being different but it's just generally the way i do it is anytime someone uses a cosm card that gives possibilities i have it give those and if they role play something really well uh that reinforces that cosm's particular actions then I might reward them with a Cosm specific one instead of a regular one. If they're just being like badass storm knights, I might give them a regular one. Although personally, I've kind of toned down on just awarding possibilities because uh, they tend to get a lot anyways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just as long as it's in in keeping with the themes of the Cosm. Mark, your thoughts on other general guidance on when to give Cosm specific possibilities. Yeah, I, I remember it the way Jay remembers it. I think we covered this before. And I also think the book, I don't know this, but I, my recollection is that the book says to do it a different way, but we all generally agreed yeah. when you do Cosm <laughs> cards, you give them the flavored possibilities. And that's that's how I've always done it, is if you play a Cosm card from the Cyber Papacy and you get three possibilities, those are three Cyber Papacy possibilities, off you go. Um, I like Jay's uh, reward system. And I do I do something similar. If you if you take an action that reinforces a Cosm's world law and it costs you something, 
but you're role playing. You're like, I know this is not the right, you know, I know this is going to be detrimental to us, but this is the world law for the cosm reinforces this, and I should do this this way. Then I'll I'll reward that that role play with a, a possibility because it's it's metagaming and it's not metagaming. Mm -hmm. It's it's the right kind of metagaming if you want if if you will. You're you're making a this is my this is this is not in the best interest of my character, but it's what the world law requires that my character should do, and so I'm going to do that. And it's it makes the game interesting. And I think it should be rewarded. Interesting gameplay. The, the the danger that you run into, especially with things like some some GMs, and I and I'm I'm guilty of this. If you if you make an exceptionally funny joke at the table that shuts down play for a little bit because we're all laughing hysterically and it's funny, I'll sometimes reward that. But I, I try not to do that very often, and I haven't done that very much in in the past because it tends to cause the table to stop play for a while as everybody tries to get their little quip in to get their possibility. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's, that's not what it's for, but it invariably, every time you do it that way, that's what, that's what it causes versus say, I'm doing something that, uh, that the law of savagery requires that, that I would do and, and, you know, issue my, my, I, instead of using my, my power, my power sword, I've decided that I'm going to close with and take this, this bad thing on with my bare hands, because that's the way it, it just, it feels right. Never mind that that thing's got poisonous jaws that if I can get, if it gets close to me, I, I'm going to be okay, fine. It, things like that, I think ought to be rewarded with Cosm. Not, if it doesn't relate to the Cosm, it shouldn't get a Cosm possibility. If it's if it's relating to the cosm and it's exceptionally cool, well played, well done, somebody does something that's just spot on for Pan Pacifica, and you go, everybody at the table stops and goes, "Wow, that's really cool. That's Pan Pacifica. Give them a possibility for that." That that's to me, that's how it ought to be done. So I actually remembered where the whole conversation that we were thinking of came up. It's because um, in in our author chat it was brought up that it was the cosm cards and i said oh no that was because i remember when living land oh. came out that my i i said something like people were like oh on forms there used to be ulysses spiel uh torg forms and on the forms i just said oh i would people were asking this question when do you do it and my answer was I do it when Cosm cards are played. That wasn't in the preview edition of the Living Land source book, but then by the time the final edition came out, then they put in the, that for the Cosm cards to be the Cosm specific okay. possibility. Um, so that's where that thing uh, has has come from. Um, I would also say for just handing them out for cool things i agree with that in theory but also i would say please look at how many people are at your table if you're playing with a lower number of storm knights i would say please do that you know if people do cool things give them whether it's a regular possibility or if it's a thematic thing that they did to give them the cosm specific possibilities if you like your table like i like my table which i don't i i feel uncomfortable game mastering under seven people and i i enjoy um eight to ten players um you you don't want to do that because that's a lot of resources out there so that's where i stick to only certain only the cosm cards that say it only the destiny cards that reward possibilities there's no extra rewards because then uh it's just all my all my little poker chips go away <laughs> and i don't have <laughs> as, as an addendum you could also say only if you're at zero possibilities sure sure <laughs> <laughs> but um so ho hopefully that helped you with that and then the the fourth one is again <laughs> more of something that i i can answer which just says, what's the possibility of proofreading new rules? How would one go about trying for that? So 
unfortunately, we're not just uh, re releasing new rules for anybody and everybody to read. We currently have a, a nice group, and not saying that you would not be a nice addition, because I don't know, um, but just saying in general, we have about the number of, of freelancers and uh, people, authors and people working on Torg that we need. But as the last seven, eight years have shown, there is term, you know, turnover. Some people step away, some people come in. Um, now that I have your email and I am pretty sure you are the one who did a lot of the spell stuff in uh, the aisle book. So I know that you are familiar with that. Uh, that is always a future possibility. So uh, thank you very much. Rabbit Ball for writing to us. And now we can move on to the Cyber Papacy. So we're going to talk kind of like how we did in the, the previous realities uh, about different cultures and organizations and how you can use this information to bring to life your Cyber Papacy as well as your Storm Knight and NPC characters. So let's start off with the big one, the uh, the cyber church. So anything that might not be obvious, Jay, that you would have in your mind on some cool things to think about when either playing a a, uh, a, a storm night that still, for whatever reason, is is for the cyber church. Maybe they don't like John Malro, but they like the church or as a game master, things that might not be obvious that could could help a, a game master shape their cyber papacy and make their stories have a little more depth. I guess the first thing I would start with is the admission that I am not Catholic, so I don't really know that much about like all the inner workings that uh, of the Catholic Church, which one would normally extrapolate uh, into the cyber Catholic Church. So, uh, I mean, I know the the general level of bishop to archbishop to cardinal and all that stuff, but I'm not super duper familiar with all the correct terminology. Uh, but the nice thing about Torg is because it's from another reality, you could just make that up. And if someone catches you being wrong about something, you could say, oh, well, it's from another reality. So, uh, as a game master, don't be afraid to have that in your back pocket, mm -hmm. uh, especially if some of your players are Catholics and they're like, no, that's not how it would work. You could say, oh, but here, this is how it works. Um, the other big thing about the cyber papacy is Jean, like the religion has been co opted, like so many other religions in Torg, like Barakka has done with Katakals, like uh, the Gaunt Man has sort of uh, fostered with the Sicelum, um, and how Mobius has made uh, you know his religion, the state religion, same thing here, um, except Melro has been changing a lot of it. Uh, he put his book of neo revelations out which changed a lot of the julian bible but there are still those that go by the original julian uh version of the bible so there are still people in the cyber papacy itself that could be allies to the storm knights and that's also probably where a lot of the cyber papacy characters might even come from uh, once you get exposed to like all these other versions of the religion on core earth suddenly there's different things uh, available. So it's not like a, a, a monothea, it is monotheism, but it's not um, totally united. There's a lot of political maneuvering going around. And even the, like the council of cardinals, like there's not even necessarily full support for Malro himself. Malro only really controls everything because of his darkness device and the fact that he's kind of like the, funnel that new technology comes through um and i think the biggest thing is to remember how important the godnet is 
Malro delivered the god net uh, to the people, and it's sort of his legacy, and it infuses everything. Um, so the toasters listening to you is definitely a big thing, but when you're the GM and you're running uh, a game in the cyberpaps, you, you should describe how there's holograms and things from the god net, sermons being played constantly and like how many people are actively using it all the time people need to find something they just pray and the answer appears in front of them or maybe a herald drone comes down to lead them somewhere everything should look shiny and friendly until you really take a closer look and as a player i think it's much more fun when you kind of go into the tropes and you use all the correct terminology because uh, some players will just say, oh, I like to use this skill and do blah, blah, blah. But in the cyber papacy, it's much better if you actually like pray for stuff or at least pretend to be praying for things. Meet random people on the street and say, oh, bless John Melro and everything like that. There can be some interesting and fun role playing opportunities there. Um, but the nice thing as a player is generally, as long as you're not like crazy about it, you can get away with a fair amount. Um, you might leave a paper trail behind you, but it takes the church bureaucracy so long to find you that generally you can get away and escape. But if you cause a huge thing, you might suddenly have a bunch of hosts show up. So knowing when to strike and then when to flee is probably the most important in the cyber papacy, probably even more so than Pan Pacifica. Uh, cyber papacy is the place that if you mess around you'll find out uh, basically um as far as like the individual groupings go for talking about the church i don't know if i have anything really specific about them yet um I'll let you guys go uh before talk about any of them mark uh any thoughts you have about the the specifically the cyber church so as jay said the the toaster is always listening. That's that's a trope. Um, that's a that's a Torg Eternity Cyber Papal trope. Um, and the toaster is listening. It it absolutely is, and it's talking to the blender. Um, and that blender, but don't let that don't let the fact that the god net touches everything overwhelm and overrun the game. Because if you if you run that one in the dirt. Your player, your characters, your storm knights, your players, they're not going to, they're going to be so paranoid. They're not going to be able to plan and do the things that they would do to, to, to advance the game and move it along smoothly because they're going to be worried that, that even in a, a room with nothing in it, the walls are listing. Use it when it's convenient. It, and, and it, it, you know, it, it can be convenient here and not convenient here and don't overwhelm the storm nights with you know everything is literally listening i mean if you wanted to have that the wall outlet listening because it's it's a smart outlet you could but you know if you if you're gonna do that frequently you got to give them a chance to notice that it's there or you know when they walk in the room and, and they're paranoid about it give them a fine check to notice that the that the wall outlet's got this little flashing red light that draws like, Oh, maybe we should disable that. And then if they leave it alone, now you're just like, you know, I showed it to you. you. I told you in the wall out, listen, listen, overheard your plans, but if they disable it, okay, now nothing in the room is listening because they caught the one thing. And so you're not overwhelming them because they didn't find the outlet, the, 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 the light socket up above. Um, the, and Jay mentioned it, that the, the church, the church is technologically the one of the second most advanced, Technologically, I think the second most advanced. Well, currently, the most advanced. Well, okay, current. Currently, the <laughs> most advanced cosm in the game. They have the highest tech level, and that means they've got they should they should have all these efficiencies, and they they can gather in a bunch of stuff, but that's surface level. The bureaucracy, the church, is still hidebound, old school. And the second level, because once they gather it, now it has to be sifted through all these people. You know, this Jack priest has to grab it and categorize it. And another Jack priest then looks at each category and they have to break it down further. And then they, they label this one as mundane. And this one goes to a, another department and that department goes and sifts through it and says that one's, you know. And so all these hands are involved with it. So it takes three days for that information that they got 
like that, you know, and they got all they needed, but it takes them three days to sift through it. And by that time you're long gone, but they've got the data, right? So the bureaucracy is behind the scenes. They're highly inefficient in, in, on the surface level, though, stupid and stupid efficient. Um, you should be prepared for your, your hackers, your, your cyber deckers to want to hack everything. So wherever you're going, as far as the church is concerned, be prepared for the, the church, the church things, because I mean, hacking a clothing store, is it a construct? Yes. Is it connected to the God net? Yes, it is. Does it have, you know, POS software to run the cash registers and the, the camera system and maybe the, the store alarm system? Yeah, it does. But why is that interesting to hack? Now, if I want to go into the into the changing room and use their Wi-Fi to jump into the God net so I can go hack a reliquary, whole nother ball of wax, right? But just hacking a clothing store, not a big deal. Church offices whole different game you might you you be i would be prepared that if you've put this element of a church a building for the church here bless you whatever it happens to be be prepared for a hacker to want to hack it you know know where the holy exchange is in the zone know what the zone level is know how they're going to get in and out know where the the local jack priests are where the reliquary might be where you know where the hope you have all of those little things that go along with the God net on where you're getting into it and out of it and, and setting up the, you know, who's, who could, who can show up and who can't, how many people are there? Do you have any side goals, et cetera, et cetera. So I would be ready for all of that because it, it's going to happen. And if you don't have at least something prepared for it, when your Decker says, well, I want to, I want to hack the, I want to get in the God net and hack this thing. Cause I want to see, grab these security cameras over here. It's kind of boring to just say, okay, give me a computer's role. Okay, you have the security cameras. You could. It's just more interesting to do more with it than that, and it's also riskier. Um, and pi lastly, I'll, I'll throw out piety scores. The church keeps piety scores. Um, when when we play uh, to organize play and, and uh, Michael Roderick is running, he will go into your character sheet, and at the bottom of your skill tree on your character sheet, all of a sudden, on its own, a custom skill called Piety Score pops up, and you have a number. And as you adventure, he goes in there, and he moves that number around based on what you do and don't do. So it's kind of fun as you're going through a cyber papal adventure with him to look down and say, hey, why is my score down? And it matters, because when you get in the God net especially church officials can see what that score is. And when you're not in the God net, if they get your ID card and put it in there, they can see your score and it matters. So keep piety scores in mind because those are a lot of fun. You can make those really interesting or really boring. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with that. I was going to bring up piety scores. And even though there are a couple of adventures that the storm Knights kind of do something that, pretty much makes the piety score either meaningless or not as uh, important as it normally is, I would not shy away from, in other cases, actually using those, making the Storm Knights, hey, you got to get in here, you got to do this thing, and it's going to be uh, something you don't want to go in guns blazing, so you might have to act pious so that your score doesn't go down you know mouthing off to the priest out walking down the street is not going to be good threatening uh, a church street beater or, you know sh shooting them up because they want to uh, ask you some questions or, or or something you know your piety score will drop and that is something to uh, take into account i'm also going along with what mark was saying high tech but low social or lower social that is kind of what hinders things things kind of accumulate at the speed of godnet but then they get disseminated and stuff gets where it should go at the speed mostly at even though the social axiom is 18 most things function more of a social axiom of 14. And that's something to take account in all of the the realms is that 
that axiom cap doesn't mean that everybody is that high, whether it's social or magic or faith or tech. Um, a, a good way to think about it in our modern world, where core Earth, we're supposed to be around Tech 23, we have uncontacted uh, humans out there or very low contacted humans that are still at a technological level of of stone tools or metal that they haven't forged, but they've found some sharp pieces of metal from a a, a boat that crashed on North Sentinel Island off the coast of India, and they've just taken a jagged piece of metal and made a, a spear or an arrow with it, but their technology is low. Just because you can get up to 18 doesn't mean it is 18. Um, that also involves with the manufacturing of things, that your cyberware, your whether that's... Uh, cyberware of arm replacements or leg replacements or uh, gun production or cyber deck production those are not at a social axiom for um, assembly lines so each one is handcrafted much like in the middle ages you had guilds or say watchmakers who would spend the time putting every piece together they did every part of of that as assembly themselves they didn't just stick a cog in and ship it to the next person so keep that in mind that if uh, cyberware is available to everybody and that's one of the things that they want to promote hey look we can fix you we can make you better we can uh, get you away from the sins of the flesh uh, the cyber church also is they're going to measure you You're, they're going to you know figure out what the best arm for you is going to be. They are going to give that to a master craftsman who is going to build the uh, the, the cyber arm and, and make it more personal so you don't have these cookie cutter cybernetic arms going around that everybody in the same village happens to have. Everybody's going to have something personal and it will probably have um, Phrases or symbols of in biblical nature you know, with the, the cyber uh, papacy twist on it and things like that. So keep that in mind, that high tech but inefficient bureaucracy as is what the uh, cyber papacy source book um, says. And as Jay said also, there are some that could have various little heretical things but for the most part the cyber church is the dominant religion they have the law the law of the the one true god that kind of nullify so it, it will allow little little things but not big things to deviate um and with uh, john malro him being the Pope, the, the cyber Pope, and him being basically the voice of God, anything he proclaims is true. And his darkness device is constantly probably annoyed with every little thing that he utters because then it's using its possibility energy to make that thing true. Just because John Malro uttered it. So... There has been some conflict when we've gone through the various darkness devices and high lords and which ones get along and which ones don't. The cyber pope has been successful with his darkness device, but his darkness device isn't completely 100% on board with uh, the, the cyber pope because of all these little rules and, and things that are, are going on. So that is just something to... Uh, think about when you're you're doing anything to deal with the the cyber church so having said that hopefully that will give you some some food for for thought on the I cyber mean, church um, if we're still on the cyber church I was yeah we, we could, could also that. maybe move like kind of up the hierarchy because uh, i was like looking i was looking at oh, sure. the secrets of the cyber church mm -hmm. um like at the bottom the thing that your storm knights are probably going to encounter the most is the flock like just the regular, just regular people people who have joined the church and i think that unlike mobius 
people were not uh, mind controlled into joining this religion, but they kind of did it of their own free will um, because of the sort of excellent propaganda <laughs> that Jean Melrose uh, and literal had. miracles a, happening. <laughs> literal miracles, yeah. Well, there was the demons first came, you know, and France was basically under assault by demons. And then Malraux and uh, his church came and defeated the demons and saved them and then could reliably show real miracles um, and real cyber tech, you know, that was way more advanced. And not only that, their miracles worked, but other faiths didn't, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the law of the one true way kind of smoothed that out. So I see a lot of the people who are part of the flock now are like the what's the term i'm looking for you know they, they've just turned true believers mm -hmm. you know they're fresh so they are really zealous about everything and this is where it's not just the toaster that's watching you it's also everybody else oh yeah uh, mm -hmm. the flock they are hungry for piety points uh, they they want to advance in the church. They want to get high enough piety to get cybernetics. Um, they've seen all the miracles. They hear all the horror stories about what's going on elsewhere in the world. They know that it is safe here. Half of them you won't even meet unless you're in the God Net because they're back in their apartments, uh, basically just locked up in their bed, connected to the God Net most of the day unless they're working. So some of them are working in the God net. Some of them are working in the God net. Yeah. Um, so that's the thing. Most people you're going to encounter are going to be fairly pro Malro. But mm -hmm. then there's also a large swath of people that are work six days a week. I don't think so. Uh, I don't want to be part of this. So you've got in the sprawls, you also have the gangs and the people who have completely abandoned the cyber church. But then is it safe? Because have they, if abandoning the cyber church, have they gone the other way? Are they worshiping demons? Are they cyber witches? Are they, you know, there's all kinds of things that, be, that could be going on. And everyone knows as long as you stay in the mountain, if you stay in the safe places, then you're safe. So you really have to worry about getting ratted out uh, by other mem like members of the flock as well so uh social skills are very important and that's why we've talked about it before that one cosm card that causes the suspicion can be so funny uh, right and also wreck you if you're not careful i'll i'll I, li I like that uh train of thought and i'll add to the the piety score your your own and even versus others just think uh, a lot of people role player probably play video games and just think of all the stupid farming that you might do in some video game mm -hmm. just to to get on a good side of whatever organization of reputation that, that game. farming yeah where you just do stupid stuff over and over to get your reputation up and people are going to be doing things like that of a oh denounce a heretic that's going to give me 10 points so let me look at all these heretics and i'm or whatever it is, Jay. Let me go find, find, find some find heretics. Find yeah, you know, or find... manufacture <laughs> sure. <some> heretics. <laughs> and and you, that's you know so, something to to think about and use as a yeah because as they get more piety points, more uh, access in the God Net happens, and if they get really high, then they get kind of unlocks. You know, where yeah. various other places within the god net unlock uh you get cool wings for, for them yeah you get cool <laughs> wings you get to fly you get to do you know you level up or whatever so that's just a so, something to to keep in mind of why all of these other people are looking to rat out your storm knights or possibly piety hunters is is there they, they have incentive to to do so <laughs> So Jay, you were uh, talking about the the flock, and then we go higher. Yeah, we go up. The next level is the priests. So the cyber priests, and there's various types of priests. There's different orders. Um, so it depends on where you are, because there's the missionaries that go out uh, before the invasion. They usually mm -hmm. don't even have any cybernetics or anything, and they just talk a good game. 
Uh, that's really about all they do. The um, end is but, nigh. Yeah, yeah. The doomsayers. Um, they might have some um, cyber papal expeditionary force troopers with them, maybe disguised or something, but I think that the time for them has more kind of passed. Um, but isn't it isn't it usually hospitalers who go out of the cyber papacy on as as not not necessarily the enforcement arm, but so the the expeditionary forces? The, they're they're the spearheads of invasion. It's the yeah. yeah, but I thought they were they were also a, the agents that went well, out a lot. There's the cyber knights that go out, but they're listed as being different than the hospitalers. Yeah. Uh, so the the hospitalers are the 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 spearhead of the act like actual Active. invasion invasion. I got to remember where I read that because I'm. Uh, it's stuck in my head. I guess the, the thing is that spearhead can mean a lot of things. <laughs> if if we look at and this, this is from the uh, Secrets of the Cyber Church, and it basically says with the Hospitallers, they said they are charged with providing se security and strength of arms and protection of priests and nuns who provide aid and comfort to crusaders. Um, it did say that they were. Uh, they law they basically want to lead the battle directly conquering new lands in the name of the cyber church um the cyber knights are the ones that said that take on missions in other realms they are particularly used to counter delphi council activities maybe i'm thinking of the cyber knights then yeah, i'm conflating so, so cyber knights are kind of a generic uh like just cyber knight um I, I've personally used them as uh, sort of they're, they're kind of like a mishmash of all of the other knightly orders that kind of aren't being named uh, you know that existed in reality like the mm -hmm. Teutonic Knights and things like that um, so that Malro can just just pluck a few knights from all these different small orders and then call them his cyber knights so that they're more loyal to him than to his uh, than to their particular order in that case but yeah the hospitalers uh, are they sound more like bodyguards almost that they don't want to be bodyguards they want to be like charging in and blasting mm -hmm. uh, but and then the templars of course are no more <laughs> um but yeah so that the, that's the other type of priest is then the type that's that you're going to encounter in the cyber papacy. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them seem to get seconded onto church police squads just in adventures because they keep popping up all the time. But uh, they're also the judges, um, you know, running courts and, and all sorts of things like that. And of course, being priests in the churches, there's churches everywhere. Although I imagine a lot of the time they exist more for the uh, aiding flockers to get into the god net mm -hmm. you know more than anything else but there is of course also jack priests uh which is a totally different type where they almost exist only in the god net they basically six days of the week are hooked up their bodies are being like fed intravenously or by whatever futuristic version they have here and they they spend one day of the week tending to their actual physical form and then head right back in uh, some of them never leave babel central uh, so that can also be an interesting thing to have players encounter jack priests in the god net that are so powerful and then have them encounter them in real life where they're just these like frail husks mm -hmm. uh, it could be a nice little juxtaposition uh, but there's a lot of ways to meet uh, cyber priests. And the, the interesting thing is with cyber priests is they're still low enough on the totem pole of like their, their, the, the level of responsibility and power that they have that they may not be totally corrupt. The odds are that they're good. Like the odds are good that they are corrupt is what I meant to say. But the Secrets of the Cyber Church does say that there is a small minority of uh, people in the Cyber Church that are good. You know, they're like actual, we're in the church for, you know, the actual teachings, not necessarily all this Mel Rowe, rah, rah, rah. Uh, there's then a larger minority, which are totally corrupt. 
uh, and totally just looking out for themselves. And then the majority are mostly just looking out for themselves, but they're not super corrupt. But if something happens, you know, okay, they'll look the other way. But it is always possible to find good or alliable uh, mm -hmm. cyber priests. Not necessarily in the middle of a shootout, but, uh, you know, <laughs> that's what card plays for. Yeah, and the those those priests take a lot of different uh, positions and stuff. They can be your monks in your monastery making your, you know, if they go to the monastic order type things, or they can be the ones that are trying to get new people into the flock. If they're sent outside of the realm, then they're the connection to the god net, which keeps the mm -hmm. ord church police under them connected and not just disconnecting and transforming it all over so they can uh, they have ways to do that and that's one of their important roles outside of the cyber papacy um and then uh there is the as as jay mentioned then you start getting into bishops and arch mm -hmm. archbishops etc the the college cardinals um, that's where you start getting into, say, the, the big bad guys of the adventure. So we won't get into too much of that because we did want to talk a bit on the uh, the various or the, the two main um, pagan magical orders, the, the cyber witches and the white witches. So uh, the the when uh, John Malro brought in the law of the one true way one of the things that it did is it makes any other faith a contradiction and as uh, things happen ords cannot do contradictions and any reality rated person has then a chance of disconnecting so the the wiccans at that time were a faith-based, miracle-based organization. And when all of a sudden their miracles were basically cut from them and they could not perform their miracles anymore, but they still had their beliefs and did not want to give them up and were not going to convert to the uh, cyber papacy, they began uh, tapping into the law of heretical magic and were able to then kind of get their their powers and stuff through magical means instead of uh, faith-based means and then there were ones who completely accepted the cyber church they became the or not the cyber church but cyberware sorry cyber cybernetics and technology they became the cyber witches and then the ones who basically thought that no this technology is bringing all this bad stuff became the the white witches and you kind of had a split of two different thoughts on technology but overall they were both from the the same thing that happened when the law of the one true way so did you have anything uh jay that you wanted to talk about cyber witches or white witches or yeah there's um so the white witches are very uh defense uh focused uh, they are about enhancement and protection. They don't really believe in directly attacking or harming others because it will be brought upon back upon them threefold, uh, which powerful miracle or spell. <laughs> so uh, if you want to play a white witch, just be aware you're going to be in much more of a support kind of role. Generally, you're not going to be blasting stuff. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the cyber witches, they are fine with blasting stuff. Uh, they are more loners. They're not in covens, but they've decided to embrace the technology and bring the cyber papacy down from within from the cybernetics themselves and the god net. So they, they can control all kinds of stuff. Uh, and being able to affect machines and computers is also very handy in Tharkold and Pan Pacifica and Core Earth. Uh, so their powers, it's an interesting situation because when you have, when you're a hacker or you're based on tech like that, it does make you not necessarily, like those aren't as useful in the living land, for example. 
but it's still a pretty good swath that if you take any powers that have to do with machinery, you still are pretty well off. And especially depending on what kind of pulp machines uh, you might encounter in the Nile Empire or Orish as well. Um, they're very, you know, rebel 90s types, uh, I think, of the cyber witches. There is a third category as well. There's the children of the fallen. They're the ones that said, well, if this is causing us to accidentally summon demons all the time, why don't we talk to these demons and maybe we can get something out of it, sell our souls, you know. Uh, so obviously not player character types, but I really like using Children of the Fallen or Forsworn or whatever you want to call them uh, as a GM because sometimes there's this, every, every High Lord kind of has a built-in resistance that comes with them in their realm but sometimes you have to remind players that the people that are resisting are not necessarily your friends right uh because just because the children of the fallen are opposing malro they're not your friends they're not on your side they are like damning people like literally and because it's the one true way they literally are damning people and they know they're doing it Plus, uh, Malro and the Cyber Church can use them as propaganda. Anytime they summon demons, they can point at the Cyber Witches, they can point at the White Witches and say, look, they're causing this. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a lot of interesting things. And then there's a lot of other wiggle room in these as well. There was a, a backer perk for a Cybermancer, which is sort of losing all of the actual pagan uh uh, trappings Background. and getting more mm -hmm. to a direct just like technomancer kind of vibe um i have in my own campaign holomancers which are a specific subset of cyber witches that purely just affect holograms uh so there's a lot of ways that you can use these things and flesh them out even more sometimes the advantage of these things only having a few paragraphs of description in the source book is it gives you a lot of room to interpret it how you like and uh, take them in different places. Mark, your thoughts on any of the the witches, white witches, uh, children of the fallen, cyber witches, etc. Yeah, the the cyber witches to me are the loners in the crowd, uh, just because they've been you know in a, in a society like the cyber papacy where so many people have embraced they've seen it happen and they've seen the miracles as we as we talked about earlier they've seen the miracles they've seen the the cyberware you know and they and they've see they see it as a good thing because they've seen people that don't have legs and the church gives them legs they don't have to buy it they just here's your here's your legs and you go now go on your way and everybody goes wow that's really benevolent they've seen the demons show up and then the church shows up and drives off the demons. Some people died because the demons are bad and they killed them, but they saved the rest. And the church did that and they said, thank you, good people, and go back to your lives. Wow, the church did that. That's really good. Never mind that the church brought all of this with them. And the dirty little secret is that the church brought the demons here so that the church could then drive off the demons and say, see how good we are. Um, the magic comes in the cosm as almost a juxtapose or a yin yang to Mal Rose one true way that just causes this magic to show up because he's so, you know, look at me on this. I'm, he can't see the pride of his own actions staining what he thinks is perfect and the one true way. And here's the cyber witches and the white witches popping up with their old pagan rituals because the, if the church doesn't have the pagans, there to be seen hiding in the background who are they opposing right and so they kind of have to have them and if they were all gone you wouldn't necessarily need the church as much so it's a it's almost a yin and yang that that one feeds off the other and they both point at the other going look that's bad we should eradicate that and if they ever accomplished that goal they'd kind of be lost because their purpose for existence would be gone so the the the, the cyber witchers to me cyber witchers cyber witches to me are are more of a hacker 
um, they're on the run from the church, kind of, because they're, they're, that's why they're kind of loners. They can't really trust anyone. Um, the moment they trust someone, they try and turn them in to bump their piety score um, because turning in a heretic really bump, bumps your piety score, right? Uh, spirits to them are, are tools that they can use. Um, they're either tools or foes or both. Um, and this is where it, cyber witches, they can be good guys and bad guys. So you can, you can set up covens of cyber witches from three to 13. You don't, you don't run them more than 13 because it just doesn't anyway, that it's a small group, but it's a clandestine group, right? And they're, they're hidden in the fabric of everyday life in and around this, whatever this location is trying to stay under the radar of the church. But at the same time, they have to survive. And the way they do that is, is through the camaraderie of the coven and they can either be good guys or bad guys. However you need them to be, you know, they're either fighting the, the church or they're summoning these evil spirits to do their bidding to try and survive. And that ends up hurt, hurting the uh, the people around them. So you can end up with the church fighting on the side of the uh, Delphi Council agents to overcome these evil, this evil coven that's harming this village. And that's kind of a fun juxtapose for the 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 storm knights who show up here to oppose this thing that's going on and they discover that they're the, the church has shown up and they're doing the same thing they're doing so what do you do you let the church help do you stop the church and then deal with it do you deal with it and then deal with the church i mean it's kind of just kind of sets up a neat little a neat little offset there um as far as the white witches go uh i kind of see them more of of um, from Babylon five, the techno mage kind of people that are wandering around where they, they, they do all of, they, they embrace the, the cybernetics and all of the, all of the technology that allows them to do what they do is so much so that, that, that it's because they're fighting fire with fire that the people that are chasing them or trying to find them are going to come at them with cybernetics. And so they, they what they do affects that so much um that they they get familiar with how to fight against that kind of thing because that's who's coming after them um i like the i like them both as subsets of groups but as jay pointed out there's not a lot written on them which allows you to get you know how do you want them to to appear in your cosm that gives you a lot of latitude to be able to shape them into into a, a thing that fits into the, the way you're playing uh, better, I think. Yeah, um, I, I would say I'm pretty sure that might be Jay's looking. White witches are absolutely yeah. opposed to technology. Is it white witches that are opposed? I thought the cyber witches were opposed. No, no so it's the opposite. Cyber witches are oh, the... Oh, okay. I got that backwards. So just reverse what, what Mark says yes. and... and <laughs> Scratch and, that. Yeah. And a, well, don't scratch it. Just reverse, reverse it. Um, but yeah, I I really enjoy the the difference. Yeah. I to to kind of simplify things even further, I kind of see the white witches as more of a rural type thing. Where again, the tech might be tech twenty six, but it doesn't mean it is twenty six. Mm -hmm. And they're and since they tend to form the the bigger covens and stuff, um and are not the loners because they are out in those rural areas that might not get as big as a church presence as other places or as a group can slip under the radar a little bit more where the cyber witches are i see them as more urban where they're going to be around the technology that they can manipulate and they can do all the stuff but therefore they don't to to even make it or to make it harder which is a good thing for them to be found out they're operating as lone wolves because if they whenever you have two people together you're not going to be able to keep a, a secret because somebody's going to say something to the wrong the the wrong person um and then the as jay said there was a backer archetype the cybermancer which was basically just the i'm a mage who wants to deal with cyber stuff and I don't care about the religious aspect of the cyber witches. So they're 
basically for the I'm going to do all the tech stuff, I'm going to get into the god net, I'm going to wreck things with magic because I embrace this magic wholeheartedly and I'm not looking back at the quote unquote good old days when we used to have miracles like the both sides of the the witches are and that might be a thing we talked about this before how characters from the reality could be different from the transformed characters from different realities the cyber witches definitely come from the source cosm and my pronunciation is based off of classical latin not medieval <laughs> latin so i am going to say magna verita but you would probably say magna verita but either way that home cosm is going to be where your your cyber papal white witches and cyber witches mainly come from it doesn't mean it's 100 percent, but that's kind of where they came because that's where they have their roots and their history where somebody who was just living in france as a normal person and suddenly got converted transformed to cyber papacy had an interest in magic or something is going to be more of probably that cybermancer uh, type type thing um so yeah that was i think a pretty good discussion about the the church and various uh organizational structure of that how the church uses the uh, cyber witches or any any what they would call witch they don't care if you're a cybermancer a cyber witch if you would consider yourself a high arc mage from isle all magic is from the devil in the uh the law of heretical magic it doesn't matter your magic on a mishap is going to summon a demon so we don't care what what the reason is you summon a demon you're tied to hell you're bad we're going to kill you and how that all kind of wraps up into forming uh the background and then with your players again remember your piety scores remember your uh farming reputation and the thing that I was going to add to that for the people who don't game, you're giving out bad Yelp reviews. <laughs> or, you know, so and so's Absolutely. bad, you know, because of this. They're in, if you're, you're, your cyber papal review thing, your piety score goes low enough, then people are going to avoid you. Just like if you have, if you're a business and have a lot of bad, uh, you know, re reviews because other people are saying you're bad, so you're, you're must be bad. It was a Black Mirror score. episode about this. Yes, yes, exactly. But, I mean, you could kind of say that for Pan Pacifica and Cyber Papacy, like every Black Mirror episode right somewhere. <laughs> so well, one of those, yeah, Black Mirror is a, a great modern uh, take that you could use when you're looking at the different genres and use it for both Pan Pacifica and for uh, Cyber Papacy. So having said that, we thank you once again for me, for either viewing or listening to us here at the Delphi Council debriefings. Remember to write us your questions or your comments at torgdcd at gmail.com. And until next time, we hope you have fun in your own Cosmverse. Bye. <laughs>